is amazing. get paid, you know, to create art, to do something that I love. My name is Dossie Cribs. We're in Wingate, Texas, and I am a silversmith. Everything is art. I didn't know that. I'm glad I know it now. Art is just, you see it everywhere. You see so many people and all the different things that they do. Just no matter what it is, you know, everybody. All the different cowboys <clears throat> that you get to see on all these Big cool ranches, you know, work and all that. Um, that's where I get a lot of my inspiration. It's just, so I don't get to be out there, so. All the, everything on the internet, you, and everything, you just get to watch it from there. And I just get to build off of that. I grew up in Rankin, Texas with my grandparents. My dad rode bulls and he wasn't too far away so I seen him every other weekend and uh, of course I started riding calves and bulls and I grew up in the rodeo and with dad ranching and I was always around ranching and rodeo and growing up. After high school and me and a buddy went out to Elko, Nevada come back to Texas and was riding bulls the whole time everywhere we were going. And that's really how I made my living until I was 22, right until when I broke my back. We were uh, down in Del Rio for a bull ride and I went uh, into Mexico and hung out and had a designated driver of course, being smart, but she uh, fell asleep. and. Uh, Rolled the pickup, uh, I believe it was like seven times. And uh, I was in the middle in the lap belt. The driver wasn't buckled. Luckily the airbag saved her. And my sister and another guy were asleep in the camper. And they came through, when the back window was open, they came through the opening into the cab behind the seat and that's where they stayed and the camper flew off and they landed on its side and everybody they were up still behind the seat right there just safe and uh, the driver was right you know they all got out and I was stuck in the truck I had the lap belt on and my leg it was a five speed and my leg was caught behind the shifter and I was trapped up there sideways and it had a, the lap belt had snapped my back. And then I was hung upside down, so it, by the time the, anybody found us out there, it took about three hours to cut me out of the vehicle. And uh, as the last thing I remember him saying was, he's not gonna make it. And I woke up in the ambulance, so it was all good. I made it. Everybody walked away, four of us except for me. But glad everybody made it out. Fire feet to the fire, begging me for an answer. I don't know what.
what the future holds. I was in the hospital just a couple of months, and we just here's a wheelchair. Taught me how to use it and sent me out. I said that was that was it, you know. So get out of there and just trying to figure out what to do about anything, you know. I didn't know all I could do. All I did was weld and ride bulls before, so uh, and then was talking with my dad, and he's the one that suggested to maybe start building some spurs, and that just. Sounded great to me, you know. I knew lots of cowboys, and but he did, and I just was like, man, that, that's awesome. We get to build spurs now, you know. This is before I even started building, I was excited. So, yeah, we, I mean, immediately we were set up. I had a little shed, you know, and I was set up for the next week. I didn't know what I was doing, but. I could weld and I could make a spur. Uh, you know, it wasn't pur the prettiest thing ever, but it was a usable spur. And uh, yeah, between all his friends and the people I knew, it was busy <laughs> right away. People trying to help out is, you know, what it was. It was awesome. Had met a guy that uh, knew Wilson Capron. Talked to him and he invited me up and spent some time with him, so that really helped clean up my work. Then from there, just meeting people and going on, you know, for I think it was about 10 years, you know, just building spurs full time. Luckily, just people are nice enough to help out and give you the information you need to help you better yourself. There's not a lot of people do that. You go up and ask them for the secrets to their trade. You know, a lot of people aren't gonna tell you, but luckily I had a lot of people that did. I can't remember who I got them from, but I had a pair of Dawson Crib Spurs that were either like his second, you know, they were a really early pair of spurs that he had made. But I flagged him down and I was like, hey Dawson, come look at these. And he rolled over there and he looks over. And he's like, oh, you should lose those. <laughs> He didn't even want to talk about them, man. And I know the feel. Like, I had three or four saddles whenever I first started that, man, I just wish I could have scrapped them and started all over. It was pretty cool to see something, knowing what level he was at then, see something that he had made way back down the road and see where he came from. They, uh, they're something I, I like to see now, to see where I came from. I didn't like to see them there for a long time. I was like, oh, man, uh, you know, they buy them back and hide them somewhere. But and I did a few pair. <laughs> But uh, yeah, I love seeing that old stuff now. I mean, it is, it's terrible, but it's where I started. I just, uh, I randomly got an email. It said, this is Sylvester Stallone, the actor. And I would like to order a pair of spurs. And I looked up the phone number and uh, it was out of California. And I was like, man, somebody's going through a lot of trouble to play a joke on me. <laughs> and so I ignored it for about a week and I, Got another email. I had just had an article in a American Cowboy, just a little bitty clip and a tiny picture. And he said he'd seen a picture of Spurs there and uh, wanted to order a set. So I uh, texted the number finally, and he immediately texted back and said, "Hey, yeah, I seen this pair of Spurs," and sent me a picture of a set that I had available. And he said, "I'd like to buy these." He said, "How much? Where do I send a check?" And I was like, man, quit messing with me, you know? <laughs> this ain't funny, this is my business. <laughs> and, and, I, and I said that, you know? I, I, said, I said, that's enough, quit jacking with me. <laughs> and the phone rang from the number, and it was him. I mean, the voice, it was, nobody could have joked about it, you know? <laughs> and he was on the other end, and he said, oh, sir. <laughs> he said, Dosey Cribs. And I said, yeah, this is Dossie. <laughs> and it was him. And he said, do you have these spurs available? And I was sitting there in shock, you know. I was like, uh, yeah. <laughs> they kept in touch after that. But yeah, I, I knew somebody was playing a trick on me. <laughs> 
So after I started going to a lot of shows and you know carrying around piles of spurs, I had uh, made a cross pendant for my grandmother before a show and she loved it and I uh, made five more little pieces of jewelry to take to the Western Heritage at Abilene and the first day I was there the jewelry was gone and Sunday morning I'm still trying to get rid of the last pair of spurs you know I went home and really after that it was started focusing on jewelry and with the jewelry you don't have as much time and you could get really creative I didn't even know I was that creative more out there pieces that you see usually that I have or something that came to me in a dream. So I keep a sketchbook by the bed and wake up at night and scribble some words down or a little sketch or something. And that's where all the weird stuff comes from, different pieces. Those are the pieces that just make themselves. That's what's fun. You come out here and you know, it may take a couple of days, but everything just goes right together. There's no problem, because you've already built it in your head. It's, it's strange, but it works. <laughs> everything that is you see in my work is something that is, is definitely something that's, you know, I've lived at one point or another. I maybe that may be where it came up, you know, in a dream. Maybe that's where it pop back up from, but yeah, there's always some connection to it, and it could be something I read, it could be anything, but for sure on the uh, personal pieces, yeah, there's always going to be some kind of connection. I had made a few uh, headdress pendants, and then uh, just got the idea to make a larger sculpture type, so I made one that was about 12 inches high. And then I wanted to make a full-size one. And I made about two feathers and decided that I wasn't going to do that at the time. So I went to about half scale, and that's the one that I have now. favorite would be finishing the piece and have it polished out and ready to engrave and then you sit at the engraving table and then you can really just focus on the piece and see the finished piece come into life because usually you're sitting there with the shiny blob of silver and the engraving is what brings it to life and what makes it stand out and what it is and yeah, that's my favorite part just watching it come to life as you sit there Oh, finishing the piece and uh, getting it to the customer would be the funnest part for me. Especially when you get to hand it to them. That's cool. We're going to see people, their face just light up. They've been waiting on this thing for months probably, so <laughs> to finally get it and it's something that they've been dreaming of, that's pretty cool. I like building it all. Like, uh, you know. That's a, that was one thing I didn't like about spurs. You were building spurs you know, my, all the time, every day. And then with the jewelry, I'd build bracelets, and then the next day you're working on a ring, and 
go from that to, you know, maybe a first purse the next week. I don't do a whole lot of that anymore, but it's a lot of different. Anybody can learn to make jewelry, to build anything, I guess, you know. But uh, what makes it an art, I would say, is, uh, you know, the creativity of it. Anybody can make rings, you know, who, but how do you come up with that new design? The new piece, the next cool thing. That's, I think, what sells it as an art instead of just being a jeweler or being a spur maker. What we do is uh, something more. So, one thing I always like, you know, with the spurs was myself, I ran out of places to go with it. And that's why I wanted, what kind of moved me to the jewelry. I felt I had more options of my ideas to take me to another level. If something's been done, if even something I've done, you know, and you see people copying it, you see the same thing all the time, and you can sit there and build that again, or you can, you know, come up with the next cool thing that people are going to be copying. And that's what I'm trying to do every time is make the next piece that everybody around is going to be knocking off. That's the main thing they're doing now. <laughs> what do you hope your legacy is? Yeah, I don't care. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I just want to have a happy life. Don't worry about that stuff. I don't care if I'm remembered for anything. I, don't, I do my job. I have fun. Now what makes Dr. Cribs the most happy? Oh, everything. Every part of life. Getting to work right here at home. Look out the window. Watch my kids play. Go right in for lunch. Pretty nice. My wife works right here beside me, doing her leather work. Can't beat it. How's it going? <laughs> Pretty good. <laughs> How are you? Good. Do you want to be interviewed? No. <laughs> no. I mean, I love it. You get to get up and, you know, go create art most days. There's nothing hard about that. It's fun if you make it fun. My name is Dossie Cribs and I am a maker. <laughs>